Okay, so we're going to start with Engineer's Notebook today, which you got a copy of. This is something that you'll be able to store in this classroom. There's a shelf specifically for second period. I would encourage you to do that. So within this PowerPoint, then, we're going to cover a couple things. What is an Engineer's Notebook? Why would we keep an engineering notebook? Who keeps this type of a notebook? The contents or the things that we would expect to see within the notebook what the different sections of that would look like, what a standard page layout would look like. And if you look at the first couple pages in your notebook, you'll see that there already is an example of a standard page, some best practices, and then some historic examples at the end. So what is an engineer notebook? An engineer notebook is basically a book with which an engineer will formally document in chronological order all of his or her work that is associated with one specific project. So if I'm working in the field, and I'm working on a specific project, I would have one notebook that would document all the work for that project. For you guys, this would be a book that would document the entire course, not just one specific project. It's going to have clear and detailed description of your design process. The idea is that if someone were to take your notebook and they were unfamiliar with the process, you were detailed enough where they could pick up where you left off and continue that project. The notebook is recognized as a legal document that is used for patent activity because I can prove the origin of my idea, meaning I can prove when I started working on this project. I can prove when events or ideas occurred within that project and prove due diligence in turning the idea into a solution. So the notebook itself is considered a legal document. If you were to design something this year that could be patented, you could use this notebook as some of the proof for documentation for that. So engineers in the field, especially those who work on RED, are going to use that as a legal documentation of their work. So there's continuity within their projects. But as an engineering student, specifically high school students, we're going to use this to develop time management skills. We're going to improve research, documentation, and communication skills. So the, the note taking that you do is some part of this notebook process. And it's going to be the basis for pre professional presentation of your work. So a lot of the projects we do, we're going to turn in the notes or the work associated with that project that you did within your notebook. The content of the things that we would expect to find within the notebook are listed here. You know, we would be discovering the problem. You may find some research within the notebook. Sketches with labels and descriptions. We're going to start sketching today in our first activity. You know, brainstorming ideas. We could have used our notebook to do our first instant challenge. You could have brainstormed how that bridge was going to look within the notebook. Any calculations, daily thoughts, pictures, so on and so forth. So a lot of this information we would expect to find within the notebook. So the different sections that we're going to find within our book, starting with the title page. So in yours, there is a title page if you back up a few pages. On that title page, we can include the page number of when this activity started. You can include the title, like today we are taking notes on the engineer's notebook, and then the date in which we started this activity. We're also gonna have general chronological entries, so your daily entries, whether that be note, whether that be sketching, whether that be calculations, is going to go in the notebook. Any references, any contacts, this is the type of information we will find. Your standard page is going to be quad ruled paper. Quad ruled simply means that it's graph paper. All pages are going to be numbered. Yours are, have already been numbered for you, so that's a nice thing. You're going to date the entry. So as I'm working on it, I'm including today's date. Signed by the designer. The designer is always going to be you. You're considered the designer. And then signed by a witness. The witness is going to be if you're working with a partner on the activity then you would witness each other's notebook. Working on the same project, I'm a witness to that. Include a statement of proprietary nature of the notebook. That simply means that the content of the notebook is proprietary or belongs to you. So this is your work. All of our work is in pen. I'm not a real stickler on that, especially as we're doing drawings like sketches and, and calculations of math. It's okay to be done in pencil, but typically we do in pen so that once it's been added in, it can't be removed. We want to avoid using markers or anything that would bleed through. So like using your Sharpie as, as note taking would probably be disastrous in the fact that it would bleed through the pages. Pages are sequentially numbered 
in ink, which has already been done for you, and the notebooks are bound, meaning that we cannot remove pages, but we cannot add pages. So if you've made a mistake, I don't tear that page out, put a line through it, we'll move on to the next page. They're numbered here. Entries begin at the top of the page, working from left to right, from top down. We're not gonna leave any blank space. If there's any extra space, we're gonna draw an X, sign our name, or draw a line, sign our name, and move on to the next page. This is specifically if I've finished documenting whatever it is on this one specific activity, and there's extra space, rather than starting the next activity in that space, I would go to the next page. So I'm showing that I intentionally left this part of the page blank. If you do make a mistake, so as I'm taking notes or as I'm working through the say design process, I make a mistake, I'm gonna draw a line through that and I'm going to initial it. Never erase or remove anything because the mistakes you've made are simply part of the process. So we wanna keep that documented in the notebook. So we have an example of that here. Make sure you date each entry. This is especially important if you're working on the same activity, the same notes over multiple days. This is what I added to the notebook on this day. This is what I added to the notebook on different days. So here's an example of something that was worked on specifically 515. They included that as part of the date. If I'm going to add images or pictures into my notebook, I want those to be permanently attached. It shows glue as the preferred method, but we'll more often than not use tape in here. My fear with using the glue is that you have the, the possibility of gluing pages together. We don't want to do that. If you were to use glue to do this, don't use the wet glue. We use like a glue stick. The wet glue would have a tendency to warp the pages within your notebook. Make sure you sign your name so that it goes across the image or whatever you added and the notebook. It just indicates that you're the one that's added this to your notebook. Sign and date each page at the bottom before going on to the next page. And again, if you're working with somebody on the project, you're going to have them witness signature that because you worked on it together. Store the notebook in a safe location. For us, there's a shelf specifically for second period that you can put your notebook in and store it there. Make sure that all sketches are labeled. Make sure that the calculations and figures are clearly labeled. Right, so this would be the picture of a prototype wheel and axle subsystem, along with the calculations. I'm showing these as the type of calculation I used to show the work for those calculations. Progress entries would be, again, if I'm working on the same thing over multiple days, I'm gonna show the progress. I'm gonna make sure I include a date. This could be a simple reflection on what I've done, the tasks accomplished, or reflection on future needs, future things that need to be completed. So the big takeaway is for this notebook, we need to be very neat, we need to be very accurate, legible, and be thorough. Here are some historical examples of an engineer's notebook. Now, with this new information, we're going to cover a couple things. Today, we're gonna to start specifically with concept sketching. The idea is, is I'm going to practice first identifying the front view of an object. Okay. And depending on the object you're using, that might change, right? Most people talk about the front of this car being the front of this object, right? Makes sense, we call this the front. But if I were to draw a sketch to identify the best front view for this, I would be looking at criteria like the greatest overall dimension. I would look at most natural position, fewest hidden lines, best shape and contour for that object. And if that's the criteria I would using, I would say that this is probably the best front view for this object. Meaning, if I had one drawing and one drawing only to give you the best description of this object, I would probably draw this front face because I would get the contour and have a better idea that it's a truck rather than drawing the front here. Okay. So as we're working on activity 1.3, concept sketching, keep that in mind as you're selecting items to be drawn that you're identifying the front view. So within your notebook then, I want you to pick a couple of simpler items, so two specifically simpler type items. So we're looking at a list here of, it could be a highlighter, 
It could be a toothbrush, scissors, something that you have with you right now. So it's in your backpack, it's on my desk. I wanna draw two of those within the notebook. I can use the grid spacing on the notebook pages to help me with my proportion. And I can break things down rather than looking at the overall object and trying to draw it all at once. Focus on smaller sections. If it's the animal blocks, focus maybe on the wheel. I can set the proportion of drawing the circle for the wheel. I can base the rest of the drawing on that. This is not an artistic rendering. This is simply drawing what you see, like the contour of each of these objects. So two simpler objects. We're gonna pick two more, maybe a little bit more complicated, still things that we find within this classroom. We're going to sketch the front view of one of the automo blocks. So I have several to choose from on the desk, but we're going to draw what the front looks like. And then two more after that that are going to be a little bit, again, more complex. But the choice is going to be up to you on which one you're selecting. Finally, there's some conclusion questions that are at the end of the activity. We're going to answer those either on the Word document or you can do it directly in the notebook work on this for the next two days and when we finish it everything is going to be submitted on the LMF.